Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a mineralogy lesson to share with you today. We're working through our live education Waldorf curriculum and today's lesson is on the formation of coal and petroleum. I'm working through our main lesson book. These measures nine inches by 12 inches and you can see a little preview of the lessons that we've done so far in preparation for today's lesson. Typically, we'll have the illustration on one side and the written content on the opposite side, but today we're going to be working on a two-page spread with the illustration covering the bottom portion of this page and the written content being somewhat in the middle and the top of the page. So for today's lesson, we're going to be doing a scene from the Carboniferous period, and this is the time in Earth's history where the production of coal and petroleum took place. So this is a very interesting period of time marked before and after by some huge geological changes that I plan to go into with this lesson with my daughter, which is actually a very different way that we've been approaching these lessons versus the way that we have done our geology and Earth science main lesson blocks in the past. In the past, we used to use a lot of additional resources and books and projects and hands-on activities as well as field trips in order to do our main lesson blocks and our unit studies. This time around, homeschooling my last child, I decided to stick more closely with the curriculum and follow the sequence a little bit better, as well as the whole arc of looking at limestone and granite as the two archetypal rocks. I've really enjoyed this process quite a bit, and it's brought me to a new level of understanding of these topics on a deeper and more holistic level than we had done in the past. It also requires more time on my part to do the research to present these lessons, and that's why I am doing these illustrations and the written content in advance of preparing and presenting these lessons, so that when we are doing these lessons, I have the background information that's substantial enough in order to orally present present these lessons without reading from books and learning the content alongside with my child. This way, I'm learning the content ahead of time, and honestly, this elongates the entire process. I spend more time in the research phase, I spend more time in the illustration phase, which is completely optional. In the past, I used to just find illustrations for my children to copy, or I would do illustrations on the chalkboard, and I would never do illustrations daily for our main lesson blocks, except for a couple of times in our homeschooling journey. For the most part, I would do an illustration that could encapsulate more than one main lesson or it would be one illustration to set the tone for the entire main lesson block and I would leave that chalk drawing up on the chalkboard for the duration of the main lesson block. This time around I'm doing my research in advance of presenting my lessons which means that I'm spending more time researching because part of me enjoys the process but also part of me realizes that in order to present this without reading from a book, I have to know this pretty well, pretty deeply. Now for some topics, it doesn't require that much much research, but these ones, because I'm approaching some of these topics that I haven't approached before, I'm doing more research than I would have normally done. This is information that I'm learning for the first time, and I want to know the details, even if I am not presenting everything that I'm learning I want to have the background information so that when I am presenting it, I feel confident and I'm presenting information that I feel is accurate. I'm also doing the illustrations ahead of time and I'm really enjoying this process. I also don't think that this is necessary as it does take a lot more time, but I'm really happy with the whole process. While I'm doing the illustrations, I'm often listening to a video that explains this particular lesson so that I'm also educating myself as I'm doing the illustration. If the illustrations are not included in the main lesson book, then I am finding inspiration online. And for this particular illustration, I did draw from about two or three different resources, different illustrations that I found online. And I took different aspects of them to create this illustration. I really love the way this one turned out. It really gives me the feeling that I was hoping for, something that's swampy and just overgrown with all of this vegetation. Now, while some of the parts of this illustration do look like trees or tree trunks, they are not in fact trees nor tree trunks, nor do they have roots or flowers. These are ferns and club mosses and horsetails. And during this time period, they grew even higher than some trees today. 
the insects also grew to be extraordinarily large. And so this time period is roughly 300 million years ago, and all of the production of coal and oil happened over the course of about 60 million years before there was a catastrophic, tremendously large volcanic eruption that spewed so much gas into the atmosphere and warmed the oceans to an extremely high temperature that there was no more coal or petroleum production since then. So this is a non-renewable resource as we go mining for coal. But this scene itself really gives me that feeling of being hot and swampy and humid and uh, somewhat of a shallow sea. The seas would cover an area they would regress they would cover an area again and all of this plant matter would die and then fall to the bottom of these shallow seas and because they were in the water they wouldn't decompose entirely and over time more and more plant matter would fall upon it and it would get compacted over time and heat it up and with the pressure of all of the material above and potentially from below it got compacted and compacted and then over time we had more sediment that covered this so that when you actually do go mining for coal you do need to drill down quite a bit before you get to a coal deposit. For this illustration I am using my Lyra color pencils as well as my Kohinoor color pencils and I'm switching back and forth between them because I was looking for a particular color range in order to do these illustrations and no one single color pencil set had all of the colors that I was looking for. I'm looking for a lot of sagey greens and some bright greens. The water is sort of a green blue color and I only did one layer but when you look at illustrations or visual visual of what this time period looked like, you can see that there are swampy areas, then some land, more water. It seems absolutely enchanting, although it was a very unhospitable place if you were to travel back in time. The oxygen content at the time is expected to be about 35% versus the oxygen level of today at 21%, which means there was far too much oxygen for us as humans and mammals. It also meant that there would be raging wildfires because of the high oxygen content. During this time period, arthropods were exceedingly large with insects being as large as birds and millipedes and centipedes were as large as crocodiles and weighed practically as much. The oceans were dominated by sharks and the land was dominated by amphibians. Fern trees grew taller than pine trees and there were no conifers or flowering plants at the time. This time period was also marked by hot humid weather. The continents were clustered together near the equator or closer to the South Pole. This was prior to the formation of Pangaea. Coal production takes several million years after all of the plant matter deposits onto the lower floor of the swamps and shallow oceans. It is then compacted by more material and sediment. It then turns into lignite and then after more compaction, pressure and heat, it turns into coal. The last moment I decided to add a dragonfly and a centipede over that what looks like a log, which is actually a fern tree decomposing on its side. And then after this illustration, I went ahead and I did all of the written work. And then I found this little blank spot here that needed one more fern tree to take up this little blank area. I hope that you've enjoyed this look at this lesson on the Carboniferous period and the formation of coal and petroleum. I hope that you've enjoyed this entire series. You can find the links to all of these lessons in the description box below on the playlist for our Geology, Mineralogy, and Earth Science unit. You can also head over to the website at pepperandpine.com to see the blog post that accompanies this video where you'll find links to all of the resources that we've used over the years for all three of these main lesson blocks. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.